I'm thrilled to death that I did it. As one of the first women to enlist in the Marine Corps, Catherine Schrader was a trailblazer. Believe me, it was uh, a guinea pig sort of thing because they didn't know what they were going to have to do with all the women who were joining. She helped pave the way for all the women who followed, such as Melissa Talent, who joined the Marines some 20 years later. If I ran into her today and, and knew she was a Marine, We'd be hugging and, you know, just shaking hands and everything, you know, because she's part of us. Talent helped organize supplies for soldiers training to fight in Vietnam. Schrader operated a flight simulator in Florida to help train pilots for World War II. While women played key support roles during those wars, they were all kept far from the battlefields. They wanted us to fill those positions on on the base that they couldn't fill with the men, you know, the, since they were sending them all overseas, uh, they needed someone to take care of the stuff that was on base. But that was then. This is now. I loved it. I loved being able to go out during um, our field trainings and fire the weapons that we had. I mean, I got to pull tail on a howitzer, which was phenomenal. And it just, the whole thing comes up, it rocks. And it was, it was awesome. By the time Amber McAnola was sent to Iraq in 2005, women's military roles had expanded to almost everything short of direct combat. I was actually an intelligence analyst. I took information that we were given and broke it down to see what was important and what was mission critical and what was not. She says just being close to a combat zone caused her to develop PTSD when she returned home. We got so used to hearing, you know, explosions going off all the time because of controlled detonations of bunkers that they found or um, bombs that they had found, and we'd hear it all the time. So it was no big deal, but hearing a car backfire, I was on the ground every time because it was that gut reaction just to drop. And um, people tailgating, I still have an issue with that a little bit. People ride me when I'm driving my truck. It's still, I have to remind myself I'm at home. By the start of 2016, the U.S. Armed Forces is scheduled to go even further, allowing women into ground combat roles. McAnola says it might be okay for some women, but it wouldn't have been for her, and she has mixed feelings about putting women on the front lines. I've known men and women both that can do front lines combat jobs, and I've known both men and women that can't. And I think it's up to the woman to, to decide for herself. If she can do it and she wants to do it, by all means, go do it. But I don't think society, society as a whole were ready for that. I don't think people are ready to see their moms and daughters come home in body bags. Meanwhile, Talent says she couldn't have physically handled ground combat, but... For some women, it, that maybe that's it. You know, we're all different. More than 200,000 women now serve in the active duty military. Combat or not, both these veterans agree that every military role is important and women are vital in helping the armed forces keep America safe and promote freedom around the world. For Veterans Coming Home, I'm Jim Grayway.